taking a leap of faith can be a daunting task. For some, it could mean quitting a job or moving homes, and to others, it could mean a completely new start. Our story is to find our careers, and today we are going to talk to Brian Tong, a content creator who has such a story journey and a prime example of somebody who is not afraid to take that giant leap of faith. With growing connections all around different cities in North America, Brian joins us today to share his story. So welcome to the Apple Box Podcast. My name is Daniel Lau, I'm your host, and I'm sitting alongside my co-host, Anthony Voltzinas, and the cross of us today, the man of the hour, Brian Tong. Let's get it. So we got Brian Tong in today. What's up, man? What's happening? Yes, sir. Yeah. Out here from Ottawa to Tirana. I know, yeah. You <laughs> honestly, your story was crazy because I saw a story of you and IG, and that's how I discovered you. Yeah. Right? Probably suggested friend or whatever because we follow the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I wanted to talk about that story because I think the key thing about that story is taking that leap of faith. So that's something I want to go into. Oh, so right. let's, let's start from the beginning. How, what, what's the story of Brian? Long story short. Oof. Is that was from the Ch- Chinatown hood, immigrant for, uh, refugee family, mm. and grew up uh, in Ottawa, represent 613 all day, no matter what you guys say. That's how I, <laughs> I, I celebrate. 416, did I hear that? Four one six? Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I lo- honestly, like, uh, there was just some contrast, but we'll go deeper on that one yeah. as well, too. But I was actually a professional dancer turn casting agency and turn to media production agency didn't start out like that i was just dancing my face off i was that street kid with wow. the break dance the cardboard yeah nice. yeah i was the asian kid that was not supposed to be doing anything other than being a doctor or a lawyer we get this story yeah because I, I heard that part of your story like you went to school for your parents sake yeah well at first it was just something that was so because of my upbringing and the poor upbringing of the environment that I was in, we're, yeah. we, were, we were raised with a like very gang-related environment. Right. I learned gang mob ties before anything else. Right. It's, I know that sounds, that's, not, that's not for street cloud or anything, but that's actually what I was raised with. I yeah. learned about drug dealing around probably third grade, and I learned about third brothel. Grade? I learned about brothel, the term brothel around grade two. Jeez. And I learned about gangs approximately around grade seven and eight. Wow. And restraining orders and police officers. So that was like kind of like where my upbringing was. Were you ever in a gang? No. Uh, I was super close. And that was the reason why that made my dance career like accelerate even more. Because what happens, I had a choice between a circle of gangs yeah. mm-hmm. or I had to dance. And there was like wow. these break dancers Big and contrast. there was gang. And I had the choice. And I was like, let's see what's going on. Obviously, there's lots of girls who said, you should really dance. They're really you're good. I'm like, shh. Yeah, I'm gonna go that way, where that is, <laughs> and that actually saved my life. Really, it really Damn. did, and that that uh, wow. reached me through the dance world, and I saw it, and I got addicted to it, and that became my my outlet. And it's a longer story on the dance world, but you're gonna keep that compressed. So that's that's kind of like Brian Tong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what what you started as a dancer in Ottawa? Yeah. Then you said you moved to like New York, was it or L.A. or you moved oh, to we states? Get, we get this a lot of stories. So so I actually just took a one way ticket to L.A. This is a lot later. So why LA? LA? Was that for dancing? Was that like your? Because people goal? keep saying that's what uh, that's what you gotta do. Go you to gotta LA. be fan. Go to yeah, L.A. Yeah, go yeah. LA. I, again, with the environment I was raised, you're 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 put in a box like with a mindset of a, in a box yeah. so you only understand what you were presented so right. if people yeah. say hollywood's the life then let's do it uh fast forward to all the 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 troubles and the situation of my life let's go to where the point i was like you know what i was lost i actually got actually here's the reason why i'm wearing this ring i got kicked out of university uh can you imagine telling that to my parents Ugh. yeah i know trust me i know i got i got i got kicked out of university and that's because i was dance battling as a different moniker for a while and I was not allowed to dance with my based on my family's uh, values at that time. Oh. And then what happened is that that got me so much in trouble. It got me kicked out of university because I was doing no school. I said no, mama didn't raise no dumbass. And that was actually part of that video. Uh, I see, I see. And then I was like, I'm gonna come back. There's always an answer in a way. I got my way in, I got A's, I got B's, and I graduated and I bought this ring to remind me every time that's like I'm I ain't no dumbass. I you went back to school. So you, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I graduated. People say, Oh, you're kicked out, you're forever gone. I was like, nah. No, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. So, I've always been that energy. That's so, the gangster energy. Yeah, 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 for sure. So it's what like, school did you go to and for what? 
I went to uh, University of Ottawa for business finance because money nice. was not surrounding in my life. So right. I wanted to learn something that was going to be contrib uh, contributing to something that I was weak at, which is finance. No one gave me money before. I never had $10 in my pocket in my name. I always yeah. eat, you know, I used to lie, cheat, and steal. Like, that's the way of survival. Wow. I used to wow. sell uh, back then for fun because that's what the gang did was that we took emblems from cars and sell them as necklaces. And then we used to no do that. No way. Yeah, Penance and yes. stuff with the chain? Yes. Kind of oh, yeah. In front Man. of the city of Ottawa where the police station was, too. That was kind of like what? our upbringing. Yeah, and then we, uh, we did... Um, yeah, <laughs> we did Napster and we put it on a CD and we sold it. I, I did that too. I'm we not gonna lie, I hustled. Let's, like that let's be school. honest. Yeah. We did what I we did could. That. Yeah, yeah. LimeWire, Napster. You use downloading songs as you get them. And you, you make list. a little remix. You shout, know, shout out to LimeWire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. I never did any of that. <laughs> so yeah, so that's uh, that's that's kind of like the route from there. But like people keep saying is like you gotta make something better. So fast forward, I got kicked out. I was down the ruts. I was yeah. lost. I lost my girl at that time. I lost my money. Um, and uh, my dance career was on a high, but because it was at that time of the high, I got everything for free. Drinks, bottles, women, mm. cocaine, drugs. Now, I didn't do any of the drugs. I just knew that where the downfall of the people next to me who died from it, right. I just knew I was like, I got to stay away from this little thing. So I was surrounded with all this. I was like the VIP guy. Hence right. why I uh, knew Ottawa so well. And so I just started to get these connections and all that stuff. So fantastic that one day it just fell apart. I, it's just like something just turned. Uh. One thing's falling. Girls suing me for for jobs, and I was like, "Where is this coming from? I don't know what's going on." Dang, 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 and I hit rock bottom. At that point, I retreated and I self reflected. Went back to school, and uh, to only realize I paid ten k around for a uh, post secondary school to to be recognized that I've always been okay. I've always been talented. I am not as bad as I thought it would be, even though I hit rock bottom. And that school made me realize, like, you know what? I got to do something for myself. I'm so depressed. Yeah. I'm going to do one-way ticket to L.A. And I just did. Just like that. Just like that. Like how fit. old were you when you did that? I wish I can remember specifically. There's a blur between 20. 24 and 28. There's a big blur. I don't remember much of my life at that time. It was very dark. The reason why I want to go to L.A. is because I had the biggest regret of my life. Okay. When I just started from this dance career, I was getting big. There's a guy named Galang. Right, mm. and Lang Stro, he is a filmmaker in Ottawa that got big. He does all the the club films. We all started in the club. Right, film. right, right. Oh yeah, yeah. We all club club scene. So he was killing it. My friend owned the club. We had Far East Movement. I helped with that kind of oh, project yeah. back then because of my dance background and connections and their network of finances. Uh, Galang was a filmmaker, and he was so good as a filmmaker. And that was my first time seeing someone who's good at cinematography in that aspect. Mm. He found me. He's like, "Wait, you're Viet too?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "All right, we should really meet." Sat down, had a Tim, Corton co Tim Horton's coffee. I will never forget it. He has a black coffee. He looks at me. He's like, you should be a personality. I'm like, really? You think so? I'm just doing shit for fun. And then he's just like, no, you really should. Well, let's, let's write some skits down. I was like, okay, cool. And I actually still to this day have my Google Drive with skits of ideas Damn. and my friends I want to do. This was the Vine era. Right. So six so seconds. Skits, fast. ideas. I've yeah. always wanted to do them. No one in Ottawa was kind of proactive with that aspect. I see. So I was by myself, but I find Galang was like my motivation. Right. Galang one day, when we got busy, I my dance career grew. Galang grew. We were too busy. I scheduled to meet. One day he's like, Brian, you have to go to LA. I'll go. I was like, okay, you know what? I'll go too. But at that time, you know, sometimes you're just not ready. Mm -hmm. You just didn't jump because you're just so scared. Yeah, that was the moment I realized it was the biggest regret because he went and I didn't. He started going, and then what happens? That like, there's a place for you to live. Do it now. I didn't know who that was, and there was a guy he was bunking with named Stephen Spence. Mm -hmm. Stephen Spence is friends with Logan Paul. Logan Paul is friends with King Batch. Guess whose house he's in? That house. Wow. Damn. He was the guy who was doing the videos at that point, from what I understand. He yeah. was doing King Batch's videos or something like that, or Logan Paul's videos. Or right. that. So he was the one from the behind the camera that built their career. Yeah. You know, and that just like... Look where he's at right now. Right. He's probably doing extremely... He knows them very well. <laughs> and then there's me in Ottawa with the right. regret watching this happen. That's crazy. As I watch Logan Paul doing skits that I wrote on my drive. Not saying that it was the same skit. It was just the same idea. Yeah. That could have been me. That, that was what that I should have carry. been you if you made that leap. I carried that for a yeah. while. So that's yeah. why at the most depressive start uh, point of my life when I got kicked out of university, I got back into uh, to the idea. I'm like, I'm going to L.A. and found it, found everything.
and met him uh, briefly over there. Oh yeah, yeah. So what what would that what was that like? Walk us through like oh, the man. the I know the regret is tough, right? And yeah. that's always something that I always talk about. How um, well I started when I was thirty in this yes. career, so I started late in my life, you know, and yes. I, and I, it got to the point where it's the same kind of thing. Like you, maybe not a specific moment like that where I just stood there and I was just like, "This is going to be the rest of my life if I don't do something now." Yeah, you know. So I just made my move, you know. For but, me, I was just lost. I was because yeah. like, like in Ottawa, and I'm I'm gonna say it straight, and people could disagree, with whatever it is. But hey, I I was alone. I was right. alone for a full decade. No one's creating. No one's dancing. No one's filming. No one's doing any of this stuff. I was very alone. Yeah. I was mentally alone. I was emotionally alone. I was just broken. Yeah. Right. So ten years too. I counted ten years. I think it could be a lot more, but I was just so super alone. Yeah, yeah. I found I found healing through dance by being a teacher, but that's another story. Damn. I have a lot of another story. Yeah, that's like one of my best lines. Yeah, but let's uh, stick with the film aspect. Of yeah, it, so. that's your podcast name. Another yeah. story. Uh, that's actually part of my series. You're gonna see oh, it here yeah? more often. Okay. But that's just another story. Nice, I have nice. too many. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, uh, when I left, I was like, I need to find myself again. Who right. am I? I am no longer a scholar because I got kicked out of university at that time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a professional dancer because I see my peers in Toronto. They're getting booked. They're getting teaching classes. They're doing so well. I'm here barely getting any recognition as a dance teacher. Like, like mm. it's just at that time. Mm-hmm. But like, it was almost like a blessing in disguise that we all see it. I became one of the most notable mm-hmm. dance teachers in Ottawa. I started all these programs. I worked about 40 to 50 hours. I started to become a casting agency. Right. It was a blessing in disguise. It was fantastic. But that time I was lost. It, it's like what 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 I hear a lot in one of my mentors, or mental mentors, should I say, yes. uh, mentality mentors who told me one time is your purpose comes from your pain. And I oh. feel like you took your pain and you just absolutely you, you kicked that you kicked the world's ass with it and you're like, I'm never gonna let that happen again. Would you say that that's probably your biggest like tool that you use to to, to get a thousand it? percent. Every single of my greatest content comes from pain. Yeah, yeah, because you got to convert it. You got to you have an outlet. So for me, dance was my outlet. But yeah. then I translate that over to uh, to film at one point, and you start to see my script, and it becomes really clear, really good. My my mood, my colors, and everything becomes really good. So yeah, yes, absolutely. It's I want my biggest biggest kind of like yeah. foundations to my success. But I kind of want to make sure that I channel the happiness as well too. Absolutely, because yeah. now you're in that. You're now you're in the mode of like creating a happy life yes right yes. like now it's all about that and not returning back to that never or revisiting that kind <laughs> of thing even though we are kind of now but you know yeah yeah, no, yeah but nonetheless yeah that's really cool so when you went to la uh does that when your film career began would you say that's when you started making videos or? no i started when i met galang and then what happened is that i started using my cell phone and i was like i could so this is the the whole idea of when we went, this this is why this ring is so important yeah let me show you energy remember Mm. As people was like, oh, I got this equipment and everything. They used it. I hired some some of my friends and they filmed. I was like, this is not working, bro. Like, that's not that's not how you film. Well, you can, why don't you do it better? Maybe I will. <laughs> and I took a cell phone. It was an iPhone SE. I used that for a good ten years actually nice. before I got my my first camera, which yeah. is a lot later. And I'll tell you where the 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 the, uh, the gauge of where the the um, these equipment has come in. I used the SE to film my dance, and and everyone was like, what? The fuck right and it's like how is this done an iphone it's like oh there's an iMovie. there's an app i'm a i'm come from the the place where resources was not given to me remember mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so i use what i got so gotta to be the resourceful max. Yeah. so i used that iphone se to the end yeah like it doesn't even turn on anymore <laughs> the person i had that iphone of we start creating now that guy his name is tiago you may have mm. heard of him because he goes by the name of tiags now mm. and tiags was the number one song artist out in tiktok Oh, you know his songs. My name is Margo, or uh, my heart went oops. Oh, that's him. No mm. way. That was my fellow peer in, in Ottawa. We developed things. We to Ottawa had a lot of talent. We just didn't have the opportunities. Right. So I gave him a cell phone, and we started creating this film. That's when it began because mm. no one could film me. Interesting. So I used that cell phone, and that became, hey, can you film my restaurant? Yeah, sure. Use a cell phone. People are like, how do you do this? And then I start filming another like restaurant. They're like, this is insane. This is so fast. At that time, because my mindset was in that Logan Paul episode yeah. of Mind Energy, no one in Ottawa was doing it. That's how I became the leader. Wow. And then I used my cell phone. I became a cheap option. They're like, oh, because you use a cell phone, you're 300 bucks. No. 
Now, over time, I, I, I get it. But yeah, yeah. before that time, it's like, yeah, three bills here, three bills there, three bills. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God, I'm racking for a cell phone. <laughs> and then over time, I had no idea or use for an actual camera. Yeah. But then I start seeing the limitations. Uh, obviously, it was a lot more crisper with new cameras. At that time, with the SE, because I was so broke, the iPhone, uh, the A7S Mark One was actually the, the, the pro level or consumer level yeah. uh, camera. But at that time, the A7S II was already out. Yeah. And the yeah. Ursa games were already out at that time. Mm. But I was using the S1, which is a completely different year gap. Right. So to give you an idea what kind of equipment I was using until that moment. But at the end of the day, it was just because I was swift. I knew my clients super well. And I used a cell phone to kind of prove that you could make stories out of, some, out of nothing. Yeah. And I started filming dancers. And that's where I landed, you know, Bieber's crew and yada, yada, yada. Fast forward. Wow. Yeah, there's so much. And that cell phone, that SE cell phone made my career. That's where it started. Do you still have it? At home. I would frame At that home. thing. Huh? I would frame that thing. I, I would definitely frame it. <laughs> like I kept it, it still. I kept it still. Yeah. It's like the most powerful tool I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and my next camera, this is going to be a long one, another yeah, story. Yeah, let's go. My next camera right now I have is my iPhone 11, which is I shot my most of my, my vlogs and concepts. Oh, that shot on 11? 11. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I did commercials with uh, the Raptors with the iPhone 11. Wow. I'll never forget that. It was for Axe. It's actually for Narcity. So Narcity Media yes. picked me up. Right. And... Uh, this is where the story is. So Narcy is an agency and the agency has different clients. And mm -hmm. one of them was the Toronto Raptors and Axe specifically, actually. Uh, Axe cologne. Uh, yeah, the cologne, deodorant. the spray, deodorant. Yeah. 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 So I came in with a cell phone. Body spray, like, they call it. Body yeah, yeah. spray. Everyone in high school used it when I was in high school. Oh, no, yeah, I yeah. definitely didn't have that. <laughs> no, I, had, grade, grade I, six. I had Ralph Lauren, baby. Oh, that yeah. was our thing. Oh, you, you were the fancy one. Yo, I was, uh, that was, that was, I'm just dating myself. Yeah. Ralph, you, what was yours? Growing up? Axe, for sure. No, I've never gone to the Axe game. I wasn't like an Axe guy. You weren't an Axe guy. You no, looked I like was around a lot of Axe people like, in elementary school because like that was like, the cool thing to do. But I uh, I don't even know if I had anything, to be honest, which is kind of devastating. Oh, but now, but now I'm a big clone guy. Now. <laughs> Just must. Human, yeah, human natural, human must. <laughs> I smell good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or when you, I have a actually bad sense of smell, so I don't even know how I smell. You know? But I do wear a cologne because it's like... I don't need to smell bad for people. Yeah. Yo, it's, it's if I can't so tell, someone could tell. And, uh, <laughs> the unknown is scary. You gotta learn. You gotta learn. We learn the hard way, but yeah. now we we out here. We smell yeah. good. Do you know fresh. who? Uh, this has nothing to do with filmmaking. Do you know who Jeremy good. Fragrances on TikTok. Why do I know? This is the guy who just tried different fragrances. And just yeah, smells yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I know that. I know that. <laughs> here we are. That's tons of film. That's YouTube. Yo. Yeah. yeah he convinced YouTube. me. He convinced me to buy like ten different. Uh, fragrances. The power of influence. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, even, I, I didn't even smell them. I'm like, yeah. All right, I'll Just try it. Just believe them, huh? I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I trust them. That's like pure social, like, that's like pure power uh, social media influence. right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, love <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 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 Social yeah. equity. So, yeah. So, so reverting back in terms of like the YouTube yeah. and a series of that concept, that's actually where, why I use cell phones so much because that's how people vlog. People can yeah. use that. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. my iPhone 11, that contract with Toronto Raptors, what, uh, before that was Winterlude, which is a very big uh, festival out of Ottawa. Yeah. Narcity hired me for the first time. And they're like, we want you to film a vertical or no, at the time it was a horizontal video because there's mm -hmm. no vertical at that time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we need to use a, uh, an iPhone camera. I was like, the SE is too. It's, there's an iPhone 11 and I'm still on the SE. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about five different generations right. of cameras. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that's how long I milked it. And then I was yeah. like, I can't do this for my best client. No. So I legit, right. and I'll never forget it. And I brought uh, a young DP now yeah. uh, to an iPhone store. I came in and was like, yo, I want the iPhone 11. She's like, uh, do you want to pack? No, just give, give me it now. Black, whatever. Yeah. And she's like, okay. Do you want to pack? Nope, nothing. I just put my debit card, bought it, raw, came out and filmed my first ever commercial. Wow. Got 500,000 views, I think, at that point. That was the, my Jeez. first ever. And are, that's you, are you allowed to reveal how much you how much budget you had for that? <sighs> Given that as an iPhone commercial? Uh, it's uh, I can't really. No, actually, I can't, can't. review. Okay. But it's not actually big. It's oh. not your usual. So I could say <laughs> it's definitely under 10. Yeah. Right. And I, at that time, it was definitely under five. Wow. But that's all I could say. Nothing. That's still pretty freaking good for an iPhone fucking commercial. Because though. it was just more. There's more. There's more to it. Like the post edits. There's like the thirty breakdown, right. the revisions, and stuff like that. That was pretty sure the more. editing is the key though of all that, right? It like, turned out to be very good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually so uh, to, to to be resourceful aspect of it, yeah. I didn't realize the iPhone had the time lapse. It didn't have the slow mo. It had the wide <laughs> yeah. lens. Yeah. And I was like, no one's using this. So yeah. I practically used the entire feature. And people are like, how do you do this video? It's like, it's in the feature. 
<laughs> you just press a button. And but no one goes, uses right? it. So yeah. that's why it made me really creative. And that's that actually benchmark the creativeness of Narcity's videos in the future with yeah. me and the other people. And now all the Narcity videos and cell phones like that somewhat now kind of follow that cadence. And mm, now wow. now the budget has completely grown a lot bigger. And now we're mm. doing free of, free of video sets and studios. And you still work with Narc Narcity? I do. I love them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They really, they're, they're one of those people that just gave me that chance. But that's nice. another story how I got that job too. Okay. Let's get into that. Okay, so what happened is that like <laughs> I I re I want I wanted to represent Ottawa so much because yeah. I had that connection during that time frame right. of my life, yeah. and I just now at that point I didn't want to be a that that cool guy who got all the access. I want to become like, hey, you new in town? Let me show you the best spots. I wanted to show you the safest spots. Mm -hmm. And you want a beer? I know where to bring you. You want the best cocktail? I know exactly where it is. You want to see the best sunset? That corner right there. No one tells you on the website. I'm like that guy. Yeah, now. yeah. Which landed me Ottawa Tourism Ambassador, but that's another story. Okay. <laughs> How old are you? Okay. I'm, I'm an '86 baby. <laughs> Dance Mix '95 is yo. Dance Mix '95 is the best <laughs> album hands oh, down. Oh man, yeah, hundred percent. You don't even know. Dance Mix. Dance yo. Mix '95. Yeah, hundred percent. Yo, at me. Yeah, I want to yeah. smoke. It actually what is. is it's the best. Yeah, you know, you, we'll show you Saturday Night Wickfield number one track number one number track number sixteen Macarena. I know the tracks inside out. Oh my Damn. god, that's hilarious. It's like it's stuff you dance to in school or what? <laughs> It was, it was, it became yeah, a dance. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah, I, I did that school too. Dances, bro. I did that, I did that too. Yo, dance mix, when you, when you, when you went, to, went into a <laughs> HMV, well, first thing you grab off of there, dance mix. I look at the dance mix. Buy it, so you buy this? I bought the CDs, it? yeah. 100%. Yo, it's fire, bro. Yeah, it's cloud, so do you get cloud if you buy this? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, yeah, you, you got the new dance mix. You have, and then they came Come out. Dance mix 95 was so epic because it was the first one, at my perspective, the first one that came out on CD. Yeah, and now the rest CD. Of just tapes. Uh, we, yeah, we were at tapes. tapes. Yeah, because yeah. tapes. Yeah, and in '95, yeah. '96 was the, the era that Backstreet Boys came in. Spice Girls came out. I and can't we stand they, they were hot though. Friend. Backstreet Boys. Oh, you missing out on culture? I know. I know. I'm, I'm not cultured. You can't even imagine like a cassette tape. Dude, I, so, <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't get to press back. You got to play. Oh no no, I like that's the middle of the song. I like I like analog stuff like that, like almost like a rotary phone. Like I'm into that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Those are good times, bro. Yeah, yeah. Those are good times. And here we are talking about it. So maybe we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so reverting back in terms of like good times. What? Yeah. yeah so you said you were uh, that guy in Ottawa, but you, you almost became a tour. Uh, oh, yeah. The, right. the Ottawa ambassador. So the, how that came about was that uh, I think it was. OK, no, we're losing track. There was a, there was a link. There was something else you said. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dance 695 got her pockets. <laughs> that was it. That it's was important, it. man. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, no, we were talking about using cell phone and yeah, using cell phones. Oh, yeah, narcity. narcity. How you got the narcity? Yeah, job. yeah, yeah. I became. I I loved my city so much. People yeah, keep yeah. saying it's the city that that, that fun forgot. It's a boring city, and Ooh. every Torontonians. I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. Guess what I said? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. All right. And That's I right. did. Every celebrity that came in from Vancouver for a tour or Bieber's crew to come to the tour or like there's a theater crew to the tour, I connect them on IG. But like, let me show you Ottawa the way you never imagined. Hmm. And then some of them say yes, some of them say no. But when they do say yes, they go like, yo, Brian's the guy. Brian's the guy. Hmm. And I became building that network. And that's actually how I got to uh, Justin Bieber's crew who hmm. then wanted to get to know me over time. And then I started booking them work and then started showing other people around the city. I loved it so much that I wanted to be some sort of ambassador. I didn't know what capacity. Yeah. And then Narcy said, uh, here's a job posting. Uh, someone apply. If you are in love with the city and you want to speak about your city and show the best, it's like, and you're a creator, uh, please apply. I'm like, there ain't nobody better than me. Guaranteed. Yeah. And I was like that, that confident. And yeah. I applied multiple times. Didn't get anything. Really? Two years later, I that post came back. I'm like, no, I bet I'm now I'm a seasoned vet. Now I have my camera now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a good editor now. Now I have really good relationships. Now I have clients now. And then when they they were like, all right, we need a content creator for uh, Ottawa for Narcity. I'm like, I'm gonna apply again, but this time screw the resume. I'm making a video. You're gonna look at my YouTube video. And what happened is that I took all my networkers, like everyone tag Narcity, everyone tag Narcity. I'm done. Like I had it. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, I think I was actually in. Uh, Los Angeles for the second time in my life right now. Mm. I took another chance to leap of faith. Mm. Long story again. Um, and then I remember they are like, hey, we liked your name. We've been hearing it a lot. Uh, we want to do an interview with you. Uh, there's a task that you have to do and you have to make a video that looks like this. I look over, I'm like, is that Jesse Driftwood? 
and that was mm. the reference. So Jesse Driftwood is uh, a videographer, cinematographer, has an agency on his own in Hamilton, I think. Mm. And he did his vertical videos. At that time, uh, reels didn't exist or whatever, but stories were the new thing. So he made two to three minute cinema, uh, cinematography styled, um, no, cinematic style, that was the word I'm looking yeah. for. Cinematic styled videos cut and edited on stories and people will have to watch on stories. Wow. And he blew from 30K to like 100K real fast. I studied him and I messaged him time to time. And he gave me tips. Little did Narcity know that the person they were referencing was the person that taught me the game. Hmm. I'm like, bet. Yeah. I so already went. connection there. Yeah, so yeah. boom, immediately I gave the video. They were like, this is exactly like Jesse Driftwood. And I'm like, because that's the man who taught me. Yeah. So yeah. So you got it from there. That was it. Got it from there. And yeah. that's how my Narcity, yeah, two years later. Wow, yeah, and I'll you're still you. working with them now. They gave me a lot of chances for sure. Yeah. Like, I'm still learning so much about project management and everything. I'm I'm just from the kid who stole emblems and sold it for five dollars. <laughs> That's all. What do I? What yeah. do I, I don't have any reference. Yeah, My reference yeah. is gangs. It's just I want to get out. So like, yeah. So Narcy right. really gave me a chance. That's crazy, man. A lot of people gave me a chances, and they they that and I I always work to prove and show what I am capable of. But I think of. that history with the gangs and everything like that, because even I grew up in, in yes. that, I had that option, you yes. know, just like you said in the actual like triad meeting yeah, and seeing what they're talking about and all this stuff and stuff. And I was like, no, it's not me. I'm out. Like, I yeah. can't, I can't do this. I think, but when you're in that world, it teaches you a sense of toughness because it's like real world toughness. Real you world can call tough. it street toughness or whatever yeah. you want, but it's real world, real world toughness, right? Because yes. you're around a bunch of, people who pretty much act like they have nothing to lose and that's a scary environment it's scary. to be in exactly like yeah, everybody's I've always seen. trying to be wanting up you and it's, it's it, that's yeah that's the energy yeah always and you always have to be in defense and you always feel like you got to build some kind of natural toughness if you looked weak you were preyed upon yeah you know so that. but no, i no think more. that teaches you that toughness and that hustle it really does. It runs on the fundamental values yeah. of like structure and process and procedure. I wish like it, it would have to, I wish it, it didn't have, excuse me, I wish it didn't have to go through that process in re real world, but the process is actual tried and tested and true. Yeah. Let's be honest, gangs of New York, Irishmen's like, those are organized crime. Organized is the key word here. Right. So yes, you learn all the process and procedures growing up and yes, they do apply to real corporate clean uh, lifestyles, but like it taught me a lot. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, yeah. that's the story. <laughs> that's so, what brought you to Toronto then? So you you were in L.A., Ottawa, L.A. again. Yes, I was so in then... L.A. multiple times because uh, another. So here he goes another story. <laughs> Uh, man, there's just so much to start. You got to really steer me in the right direction. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. We're just going to go. We're just going to go. All right, bet. So yeah. the story was that at that time as well, too, I was also a beat maker because no one was making beats. Someone introduced me to Fruity Loops, a.k.a. FL Studio. So it's like you just looked at everything like, what are people not doing? Let me be the one to do it. I just wanted to have fun. And, and it just, like, it's fed me. Yeah. Because uh, like I was construct, I was, again, instructed to be a lawyer and a doctor and an right. engineer. But like my heart is like, oh, what does this button do? And then three, you know, 30 hours later, I'm making beats. And I have like 20 songs in the bank. I'm like, what the hell? On yeah. a stolen computer, I remember. That's crazy. Yeah. It was just like, like you're forever it. curious. Like that's, that's what I get from you. Like a big kid. I was a big kid every yeah, day. Man. And then that led me to rappers and whatever. And then obviously after X amount of rappers, I'm yeah. like, I had enough. Yeah. This is not getting me anywhere. Yeah. And then one day I looked at the page on the 16th page of YouTube. And I was like, there's got to be some sort of artist. This is my last call. And I found a guy named Maurice Moore. Okay. And Maurice Moore was rapping on the booth. I'm like, yo, this kid's nice. And then I, was, I called him. I know it sounds so weird. I was probably like 23 at a time, but he was probably 16 at a time. But because we're in the music industry, it's just there's no boundaries. It's like, yo, I'm working with this group, with this uh, this music industry. Do you want to work with me in a, in a project? He's like, yeah, I bet. And I was like, are you sure? You got your parents' permission? He's like, no worries. They know. And they talked to the parents. And then we did a project with him and his sister, did the mixtape, got 80,000 downloads at that time. That's about 12 years ago. Wow. Uh, so that time frame, you can imagine 12 yeah, yeah. years ago, that number is significant. Yeah, yeah. It got so much attention. Yeah. That uh, it got a producer here in Toronto to provide exclusive beats for him to write. He's like, "What do I do?" I was like, "I don't know, man. Like, should, should we like that doesn't make right? Do we have contracts?" He's like, "No, this guy named Joel. He's he's gonna help us." He's like, well, "Joel I was like, I know Joel." He's like, "What is he doing in Toronto? He moved to Toronto." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "This is through Twitter." He's like, "Yeah." I'm an old head. At that yeah. time, Twitter is too new to me. I'm like, I don't trust this. I remember getting a call. 
And he's like, don't fuck this up. Mm. This is not how it works. This, what I'm giving you is how it works. Do it. Click. I'm like, in that moment, I was like, okay, take the opportunity and do it. He started editing writing songs. And the three songs added end up with the three people. Justin Bieber, mm. Robin Thicke, and Trey Songs. At 16 years old, eating $5 burritos. We are just writing songs in our basement. Wow. And then landed that. Mm. Fast forward and everything, we didn't land any of them because there's a, lot, there's a couple of stories, but he ended up landing Omarion and then he landed Kehlani and then he landed, you know, he met Usher and then he started writing for people like Chris Brown and, and mm. all that stuff. Wow. And that led him to LA. So when he finally got the big contract and he's like, Brian, I'm moving to LA, that's my second time moving to LA. I see. I see. And that's why I brought it. And it was like a happy marriage. I am discovering myself as a creator. I still yeah. want to be. Uh, this entity that I don't know who I was going to be. Yeah. But I knew that Galang and that that regret is fueling me for sure from pain. Mm. And then his career is picking up. And I will never forget it. When we moved to his first house, we got an email. We looked over and it was like, someone made a remix to your new song. We're like, someone? Hmm. And we looked at it was Sage the Gemini. We're like, what? So Sage the Gemini, gas pedal, if you know that song. Gas pedal. Yeah, so yeah, some yeah. girls love to twerk. Okay. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's the song. So that yeah. was the remix. We're yeah. like, Sage the Gemini made the remix. That's insane. That's wow. And then follow up a few days, I had to leave. And then he's like, yo, bro, do you know E-40? I'm like, why? And he's like, he's at the crib. I'm like, and then that's when our life started really going high. Interesting. I had I couldn't even talk about this in Ottawa. Can yeah. you imagine that? Going back to uh, LA and Ottawa. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, again, back to my decade of being alone, mentally, emotionally. Yeah. I can't say anything because they don't relate. They think I'm just showing off. They right. actually, I feel, I get dismissed every time. Mm. Everything I talk about work and everything, I feel dismissed, dismissed, dismissed. So I was like, I was like, all right, you know, I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. I'm just gonna do my own thing by myself and right. be friends with everyone, and that's yeah. it. So it was very lonely. Yeah, brings back to fast forward because I was in my lane by myself all the time, working with as many creators the best I can by teaching them as much as I can. Uh, I got so many clients and projects and festivals and galas and soirees yeah. and my dance background, my casting background. I just became that guy. And that yeah. led to the auto tourism ambassador. Okay. Okay. So. Because I was making that much noise. And then everyone's like, you're the dance guy. And I was like, I guess so. Wow. And, then, and then that led to that part. But then again, when I got that accolade, uh, I also felt empty because I just don't, I didn't, my friends saw it they're like great congratulations you're an auto ambassador that's great end story all right we're gonna get drinks it's just like it didn't go deeper mm. it didn't talk about how hard i had to work you yeah. didn't talk about how painful that process was right. you didn't tell me yeah you know how lonely i sit in in the bed by myself for one hour of sleep and come back like you, you don't know those stories so it's yeah. just like i felt empty yeah wow but I had all these accolades and I had all these winning and all these festivals this thing my team when when I got so much abundance I gave it to the team. The team is like, well, we're done all the work, all the campaigns. We're kind of bored. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, we got nothing to do. Then pandemic hit. Oh, Jesus. timing. But then we got even more busy because I was the only creative person in the forefront in social media that was just good. Yeah. So I got packed with every high restaurant, every gala uh -huh. digitally, every pro. I just became that guy because yeah. so many of the filmmakers in the high level you got the crazy equipment. You got yeah, the gaffer. Yeah. All that stuff. I didn't. I was just the Mr. Run and Gun. I was the only one at the time that was And loud. social wants that. Yeah, that's their thing. Yeah. And I did. I helped one company made like 30K in a month and make a brand new e-commerce system right now. I remember saving another restaurant uh, so that they have their own e-commerce because uh, Shopify is yeah, there. Yeah, so they yeah. just lot. Fast forward everything. I just rest. I, I was working with so much uh, people and projects that it helped them kept afloat. And I wow. make sure I charge so little because we were all struggling. We're just yeah, trying to yeah. make a bill and I get it. My team was like, we're good. We were, we're bored. And then when the, the restrictions came off, the team is like, who do you have left? Right. I'm like, well, I, I know every best festival. I know every restaurant that's high level. And I'm like, there's nothing left. <laughs> so I looked at the team is like, I have to move, don't I? They're like, yeah, we need a little bit more contracts. And that's what started the move. Wow. How big is your team at the time? So uh, subcontractors, I could probably count between five to 10. Wow. Mm. They're yeah. all like, hey, we need more work. <laughs> we need more work. Because I taught them how to be efficient. 
again, being mm-hmm. resourceful. I was like, let me teach her how to be strategically fast. Yeah. And uh, some people were used to call me. It was like, let's do a video. And then three hours later, it's done. Because like, I just have the template in my, man, in my head. I was the yeah, only one. Yeah, like one. a system down. That you 100%. Know how to do it. Yeah. yeah. Because you being the only one makes you like the, have an abundance of work. So who's going to who's gonna do them? Me. So I'm, I became a master of my own craft. Mm-hmm. So basically, yes, I will cut this video in two hours. <laughs> yeah. But my team is like, how do you do that? It took me a day and a half. Oh, I'll train you. And then now they become in like a day and then four days and eight days. They're just like, they wow. became monsters. And that's allowing you to scale your business now to be even bigger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then unfortunately, when I left, they, they start venturing on their own. And yeah. because I'm not there, guess what? Uh, the, the, the juniors now took my clients over. And the that's post- okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay. Right. Because I told them, it's like, please service them. I would want them to. And they trust you. And they're like, sure. And it will be technically cheaper because I'm an agency. Also yeah, so you would fee. take a percentage. Exactly, yeah. So that's a long-winded story of why I have to move to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so when then, did you move? What, what year? Or what Last was, year, dude. One year. L- year last ago. year? Only one August, year you've been here? August 2021, yeah. Oh, wow. So it was like mi- t- middle of COVID, towards the end of COVID. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. And, and, and what was your game plan when you got here? Like, same hustle? I was going to do the exact same thing I was going to do in Ottawa. Yeah. I was going to go to every bar. I'm going to out-drink everyone. I'm going to go to every club and out-party everyone. I was going to out-edit everyone. But I didn't. And then, but that that last rule did not apply because I realized everyone here is talented. There's hmm. a thousand ones to be talented. Yeah, and I here. was scared shitless. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I was how, like, did you pivot at all to like adjust your strategy or your process to? I just became find- faster and louder. That you was the out. goal. You, you wanted to be the first one in front game. of their face, just pretty out. much. Yeah. Beat them at the game. Yeah. Interesting. I was like, I will, I, it's like, because I will learn one thing. Personalities is different, uh, like, it's different for everyone. Yeah. Right? Like, most creatives, believe it or not, are introverts. And I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, guess what? I lear- I was trained forcefully growing up to be an extrovert. Yeah. I'm an mm-hmm. introvert trained extrovert. I know people might not think so, but I, I could sit in my house for 30 days and not talk to anyone and be okay. Yeah, hmm. and just did it for ten years. <laughs> I've been doing it for ten years. I've been making beats. <laughs> I, I somehow make beats, uh, but that was that's the root of it. But then, yeah, I did that. I became loud. I became everyone's best friend. It was not saying that it's like a facade. It was like a, with any intent. It's just something a part of me to kind of feel accepted. Kind of like kind of like a it's what you needed to do. I needed to do, yeah. and I yeah. landed more agencies. I landed more friends. I landed more people, and then my social media was just like busting all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And then people's like, "Who are you, and what do you do?" And yeah. I'm like, "Oh," and I got that line. Yeah, I'm a former professional dancer, turned creative agency, turned media production, and then it just started to really like expand it to key people. Right. You might know some of them. Do you know a Roots or Camille? Uh, Camille. No. She does 3D animation. Oh, stuff. yes. I actually reached out to her to, to come on here. I wouldn't be shocked, man. She's yeah. a homegirl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And She's worked with a lot of people I know. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And the, all these crews, I just learned, you know, Felice Films from Revolt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just like, I just, everyone, the key players. He's killing it. Yeah. Matt's he's killing, killing it. it. He's killing it. He's killing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he should work on his squat more. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <ooh. laughs> <laughs> I want to send that little clip yeah, to Matt. I want to send that to Clip. Yo, he's to killing Matt. it, man. He's motivating yeah. me on the workout. Jacked too, though, so. Yo, he's yeah. getting so jacked. It's yeah. unfair, right? And and I became just faster and louder. But the the, the way that I did it was that like because of my history in the culinary, uh, knowing every restaurant. Yes. I talked to the chefs when I would go to the restaurant. Uh-huh. I'm like, yo, is that ganache? Like, is that like parade? Like, they're like, how'd you do that? And they're like, how, who are you? And how do you know these terms? And I was like, I, I don't know. But I was definitely number one, thanks to my friend Haley mm-hmm. and all my cocktail mixologists from uh, like Matty Ottawa the restaurant, like shout outs to them. And like all these crazy cocktail mixologists, they would prefer bartender more. <laughs> so right. um Taught me how to learn about the palettes. So I went to every high level cocktail place. Crazy. And then talked to everyone and say, talking to people. I was like, so is that mezcal? It was like, yeah, can you make something a little spicy, a little smoky, a little spirit forward? I'm speaking this language. Damn. And that that gave me a, a competitive advantage because um in the filmmaking world, like I said, my observation is that most people are introverted. Yeah. So for me to kind of socially know these kind of cultures is right. very rare. So you're just popping in and talking? talking it's crazy I said, that's nuts it's like your brain is like a sponge it's like you're just taking as much information as possible because i was alone i got no one else to talk to so i had to talk to myself very interesting so i had to learn about what an old-fashioned was yeah 
It's kind of lonely. I know it sounds sad. No, it doesn't. Lonely. I mean, it doesn't. I'm yeah. fascinated by it. Because like, I, I went through the same exact phase that you did. Yeah. But the difference is that I'm introverted and stayed introverted. <laughs> like, <laughs> not, like, I'm not, you know, yeah. the personality. And, and, and instead of like my brain stretching out to learn a million different things, it yeah. focused in on one thing, which was cinematography. Not gonna lie, I don't believe in the introvert extrovert stuff at all. Oh, true? Really? You're Continue. sitting in, you're literally sitting in front of an extrovert. I just think and it's like introvert. it's like it's it's like these labels that people take on that like it's just it's like a way to like mask the fact that you haven't made yourself comfortable to talk. Oh, to, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, okay. I could I could dive into that. Yeah, continue. That was actually really interesting. Uh, That's like oh, I'm an introvert. Like okay, are you or are you just kind of scared? Like. Correct. What's the difference? Like you put yourself in a box and you. But you, it, yeah, that, yeah. that's that's like saying, "Oh, you're an extrovert, or are you just hyper, or are you are you just, um, or no, you're just comfortable. Like you're just right. comfortable in your own skin. I think that's the difference. Like, I think there's, I don't know. I feel like I so you're, you're so essentially, is, extrovert is what you're saying is they're just more evolved forms of communication within a human. Like they've evolved yeah, their communication like, better. They've they've broken the box on a verbal they're level. Like, any level, I think. Like it, people say they're an introvert. It's like I'm. Uh, it's like saying I'm. Uh, I only like to eat Italian food. Okay. Okay. Here, here, here's where I'll have to battle you because I'm an introvert. Continue. <laughs> Go. Brian's gonna be the Fight. judge. <laughs> Fight. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, extrovert. Well, I think there's two different ways of communication. Well, there's many different ways of communication. Yes. Sorry, but generally speaking, I'm just gonna simplify it. There's two different forms of communication. One is verbal, essentially, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the other is, I would say. Um, telepathic, but not li- li- literally. Like I can speak to you with my mind. Yes, but I can. I f- I use my mind and the way I think to be selective with how I express, and then therefore selective with how I use my words, as opposed to someone who just uh, wants to freely let out their words. Does that make sense? So just because I don't talk doesn't mean that I don't have anything to say. It doesn't mean that I'm not comfortable, like talking. Rather, I'm just more selective with what I let out the door. But does that make you an introvert? Does that is an that introvert. Is, I, th- I, is I, I don't know. I feel like people say I'm an introvert. Is like I, I think it's a cop out. I think it's like, oh, I'm introvert. Mm. Like maybe not you because you thought about it, but I feel like when I hear people say that, it's like people do use I just it as don't a like cop out. I'll, give, I'll give you like, that. I'm like, it's a, yes, I, I'll give you that. Yes, this is like a wormhole. It gets dangerous. I know. When it you, does because yeah. it could get yeah. really deep. You get really deep. I would say there, there's just like uh, traits. So we're yeah. gonna use right. the traits. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna dive in deeper and how to actually project in my career even further right. because of that. So okay, these sure. are just traits, but it does not mean it defines you. Just like how yes. your thoughts do not define right. you. It's just these are just definitions that you can relate with, but does not have to be restricted Interesting. to. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's like right. a label you can use so people can understand yes. what you're trying and it to helps. say. I see what you're saying. This right. is social dynamics. People like that. Yeah, people like labels and simple things to understand, but there's complexity behind it. But yes, sure. because like when you yeah. say, hey, B Tong is extroverted, is like, and then someone who's just in the middle who doesn't believe it as much, you understand what an extrovert would do. Hey, what's up, man? Yo, I'm on 10. Yo, you want <laughs> bottles? Yo, you shots, shots. That's yeah. the energy. You yeah, yeah. know that's what's <laughs> coming. Because those are the traits. Yeah. That's versus, it. versus the introvert is like, yo, the introvert uh, is coming to the club. You guys. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You can be an actor. <laughs> or just chilling. <laughs> and that's it. Like, like, it's just like there's different traits, but it doesn't define them. But you understand that's them. That's what you're saying. But that actually helped me. The so social dynamics is super key. That's why I can't. So you were down. targeting hospitality. Yes. Yeah. So I was targeting hospitality. And because of my extrovert nature mm. going to like different cocktails and gotten to know all these like drinks i got to know the manager i got to know the bartenders yeah. and they're like hey what do you do boom i start talking and guess what because i'm alone oh my god you could film girl let me tell you everything and then it's like well let me add you on instagram guess what yeah i exactly. use a line <laughs> my name is what's good no it's not yo i'm always on top <laughs> it's actually it's, it's it was actually t- like when you made that handle was that like Intentional. I was thirteen tequilas deep when I did that. <laughs> hey, I just remember it was like I don't know my handle, man. So like the so you were you were you like landing these restaurant clients and these hospitality clients through these through this networking. Like, what, how did that work? Did you have retainers? Like, no. Okay, so I just did that because I was okay. Dating even further back, I was doing different various jobs, like from the bay sales associate and yeah, retail stuff. And the mm. bank. 
But this and one, the bank. Uh, the, but the va- there's one va- remember I was doing finance. That's I was right. trying to get into the game. Right. Yeah. But this one value that I feel like this nugget that I would share with everyone is like I know you're dreading your workplace right now. I know nine to five is probably burning your fucking soul right now. Mm. But do it the best to your ability. That means to you. I swear to you, you stick by that. You're gonna win. I became the best fashionista. <laughs> I was like, that fit won't work. That's in Euro cut. You don't go to Gant. You go over to Mex right yeah. now. That's actually a better body type. Why? Because it's cut for the European men, specifically in the tiers mm-hmm. of like Italian. Like I was just like making stuff up. I became so good that I knew which brand fit for what. At the Bay. Mm-hmm. At the Bay. So I, even I, if you didn't like the job, you kept the trait of I, yeah. staying And this engaged. is in Toronto. And this is in Ottawa. This is not what the so I'm right. gonna say where that's gonna carry over. I see. Yeah, by doing that, I became the best of what I can. What yeah. happens? Guess what? The person that shops at the bay, you'll never know, is a millionaire or like an agency owner. Right. That's that, that's expanded to that point. Now, fast forward even further. Now, as the bank, I was doing banking for all the Italians. That's where I came. Right. You know, they told me I'm Calabrese by heart. All right. <laughs> okay. So then I, I, and I, I can see that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was I was nurtured Italian. That's another story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then what happened is was that. I was working with all these business owners and restaurant owners, Italians, they own you know, everything Yeah. In, in Ottawa. Like, and then what happened is that they're like, yo, I got a property, yo, I got a construction company, yo, oh, yeah. I got a restaurant. And then the Greeks came in and I started learning Greeks. They come in my counter because I knew business, I know their culture, I know mm-hmm. how to speak to them. There were times to be like, hey, um, Brian, uh, this month was, uh, you know, I got the cash a little late. So uh, I was like, what about it? It's like, so my account, what, what about the account? It's like, it might dip into dip into the positive. And he looks. I look. See me you at the restaurant, my man. And mm. then there's no fees. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. Build that relationship. But mm. what happens is when I stepped out, walked in the restaurant for the first time, trying to explore. Oh my God. <laughs> it's you. It's like, <laughs> oh my God, my banker. <laughs> Be the best at your role, the best you can be. At that point, I was being becoming the best business advisor possible, learning about fraud, learning about fees, learning about relationships. Mm. I erased so many fees for so many businesses for some dumb reasons. Yes, I bet banks don't want to hear about this, but that's how you build the relationships. That's how they go into the next level. Take it. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro. Okay. It's okay. TD Bank ain't listening to this, so oh, <laughs> it's okay. Huh? Which bank were you at? TD. Oh, oh TD. there you go. <laughs> you, you do look like a TD guy. It's the green. It's, it's the, the green. green. It's the green. Well, exactly. Honestly, there was a, you use that discretion. And I built this. And I learned about fraud, and that yeah. actually helped me in so many frauds, and I helped out so many people because I just I became so good at what I do because what I was I was gonna ask how am I gonna use this in my life in the future or how am I gonna use yes. this for someone else as a consultant, hmm. and it helped me so much. So whatever the job may be, I know you. You may dread it and may hate it, but do it to the best of your ability. You may probably not wake up excited, but you're going to wake up with a new skill set for sure. Very so that to me is a value. So that's actually how I land the hospitality because they saw me like, you're my people. So I remember the bill come in, have a restaurant on us. And they're like, wait, you do video? Did the same mythology with a cell phone. Here, I made a clip for you. Thank you for the food. You made the clip and how long? That was, you just walked in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I edited on my iPhone with an iMovie. Brian, we're looking for a videographer. And that became a five-year relationship. Wow. And it became one of the most notable restaurants in the city. So much that uh, Harley Finkelstein from Shopify goes, eats there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember the Dallas, I think it's the Dallas, uh, not Dallas Cowboys, but like football players were there. The hockey teams were there. Which restaurant was this? It's called Matty, M-A-T-I, shout outs. Yeah. And, wow. and it was just like, they were the first one from what I understand from my reference is the first Wagyu steak in A5. And, and they oh, were like, yeah. the, we were just filming everything. And wow. the owner was doing so good. They got uh, uh, 40 under 40 because it was just that loud of a restaurant. It became the restaurant. Wow. Yeah. So like, th- that's where the hospitality began. And that's how I, was, uh, that, and then what happens is that some people's like, oh, I heard your videographer coming to my restaurant, come to my bar, come to my bar. As it continues to me in these bars, it's like, hey, um, I want these videos to be like this. Oh, Matty? <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, do you know that? They're doing such great social media. Like, yeah. <laughs> you should look in the caption. They're like, oh, you're the Matty guy. I was like, yeah. So what I'm going to tell you is going to it's going to win. Right. Yeah. Right. And sometimes relationship works, sometimes they don't. But that's actually how I landed. So long story short. It's all started from being the best at job as you can uh, as you can from yeah. whatever you're yeah. It's like a mindset and it transitions to anything you decide to explore or try. Yes, exactly. And mm. just just don't like don't be afraid to fail. Just go hard. <laughs> yeah. 
That's yeah. That's so, uh, that's a story. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. I have a lot of in-depth <laughs> that's stories. Nuts. That's nuts. No, I mean that's amazing. What, what I'm taking away is just how like your ability to absorb information. I think that's I think that's amazing. Store it and then and then use it to to your advantage, Dude, which you is move like at 200 miles per hour. You move by 200 miles per hour, which I think is such a like valuable skill in the film industry. I, I think. You probably make a great producer. Let's <laughs> just put it that way. Mike, that's oh, what yeah. my agency is about. If, you, if you decided to be, yeah, yeah. That, that's. I think you'd be an amazing producer, just being able to connect with I everybody. Hope so. And shoutouts. That's crazy. I mean, yeah. maybe that's something you should do. You know, but it's, that's what we're known for for our mini boutique agency. What's right it now. called? Yeah. Studio Seventy Nine E. Nice. Okay, and cool. There's a story on that one. So my brother and I, we he wanted to help me. He worked for agencies before. I did not. I was a freelance hustle again the next check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And blowing it all on stupid, stupid causes <laughs> like dates. Anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> got about twenty stories there. Yeah. So that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> dating. Oh, my gosh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my brother is like my 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 foundation he taught me so much and i thank i'm so thankful was for he him. always there like in your life throughout the journey? there's like a lot of blurs because mm, mm. asian asian relationships are really different it's very odd yeah it's it a hierarchy is. system you're my yeah. brother that's it you're he's my older sister. than you he's younger he's younger yeah but he he needed to be that solidified energy for me because i'm so creative and sporadic and lost yeah. no one's really teaching me the ways where he's like systematic and operational keeps you grounded yeah keeps me fucking grounded nice he, when he answered in i start to really learn about like oh agencies sleep at nine of like after five o'clock it's a thing and then like oh yeah. i could delay this edit the next day i don't have to stay up to four o'clock in the morning yeah. change mm -hmm. my perspective and then my flow has gotten better i'm still learning to this day and then fast forward to toronto uh everyone's like you just know everyone so we're gonna like your energy we're gonna use as a producer so my studio 79e uh, is a production company that focuses on both like editing and producing, but more, so, yeah, more so producing. Right. More so. Interesting. Yeah. Producing what exactly? Yeah. Uh, as, again, like, like social uh, content, like social same thing content that you did before. and even on set. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. too. like, like we became that. It was, yeah. it was something that we planned. It was just because I was so, I was just landing these opportunities yeah. and I had to kind of learn. Nice. And I knew I was capable of doing it because I was doing festivals and galas and soirees mm. in my casting agency. So I manned 10, 25 people team easily already. You wow. gotta go to Avicii. You gotta go to Afrojack right now. You gotta run over to, uh, you know, Lao Luxury. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, so yeah. my brain already knew how to produce already. Wow. So yeah. So um, Studio Seventy Nine E rooted because of my brother and I. So Seventy Nine E is actually the address from our hood, oh. which is Seventy Nine Eccles. Nice. The reason why I want to go to our home because that's where our hardships came in. That's where we experienced the gang, the fights, all the danger, mm -hmm. house broken into, the hardships to the good. Yeah. So 79E was a representation of that. But why do I want to choose that? Uh, because I want to say that whenever people who want to work with us want to feel at home. Mm. It's an Italian upbringing, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? How it rests. You got you to gotta come in, <laughs> want to feel at home. Yeah. So I want you to associate our, our, our studio. 79E is always a place that you always call home. And 79 Echoes is a home. Nice. Yeah, so that's wow. where it's rooted. Wow. What's this year been in Toronto for you then? That's this year so far. How's it been? Oh, man. It's just like, okay, so like this is more of a vulnerable thing, but yeah. I'll go in one aspect and do in different sure. blocks. I would say in a more of a, a creative uh, perspective right now, I feel seen and I feel really received. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, it's the nicest thing I've lost in the last 20 years of my life. I just never had that. Mm. Someone I remember going in the streets it was like, "Is that what's good beat song?" And I almost cried. Damn. Because I people like don't quite get it. Why? Mm. Because in Ottawa, no one calls me what's good beat song. They call me Brian or beat song. Right. Oh, he's just the party guy. Oh, he knows all the connections. He's just everyone knows everyone. That's it. But they don't know how I got there. Mm. They just do. But then when someone says, what's good beat talent? You followed my journey as a creative since day one. Yeah. You know my history. You know my story. And for the first time, it's almost like someone held my hand. It's like, I've seen what you've done. Nice. You you deserve, you congratulate. I, I almost cried. Yeah. yeah. And that was my first like emotions on that one. Yeah. I was like, this is too much. This is too much. Like it was like my 14 year old self is about to cry. Yeah. yeah. And then like dancing, uh, when I moved to Toronto, I actually retired from dancing at that point. Cause I, oh. it's been after 12 years of, and not like, really doing the best I can mm -hmm. uh, and got the accolades and great. But it's time for me to take a break. But some people are like, oh man, I've seen you. And this is Sean Desmond's crew. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. yeah, he was well. my favorite singer all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. nice. okay. But his crew, 
I befriended them all the time, but he's like, no, you did a lot. You produce shows, you produce galas, you make money for people. And I was like, can I just be honest? It's like, I rarely receive any, a thank you. I don't remember a, a thank you that I would call. Mm-hmm. It's very few. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even though, again, the accolade from auto tourism uh, for the dance guy, it was just like, it was a business move. It didn't feel like it was like an authentic, yeah. genuine, rooted history move. Mm. Right? I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the, the accolades. It was great. But coming back to me, it's just like Toronto made me feel like all I did was actually worth it. Hmm. I know my best friends remind me all the time. I just don't feel it right. just because of the environment of Ottawa. Um, yeah. And when I say, oh, man, like, I have to go to work. I have to do this edit. What? I could talk to you about it. I could talk to you about yeah. it. You're like, oh, I know that feeling, man. Yeah, we're going to stay up to 3 o'clock. I have friends I can stay to 3 o'clock? <laughs> Where can we go? It's like, let's I go know. to McDonald's yeah. to, and get the Wi-Fi. I'm like, oh, you, I'm not going to be alone? You know how lonely it was? And this is yeah. actually Trump. Like, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, yeah. you're good. You're good. Yeah. 10 years plus doing this alone sucks. And for me to finally move and be like, I could connect, it's almost like, why did I deprive myself? It was hmm. just so a lot of emotions. So on the vulnerable side, the, the creative side, everyone's giving me the greatest opportunities. Everyone's giving me accolades in, in a more human level. Right. And I feel seen. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. And it's also on top of that, uh, now being move over to like as a human, I got to see my Toronto family more often and they get to know me a lot more. I haven't been connecting with them and my mm. Toronto best friends I haven't seen for like five years. I want to see how they're doing. And now we're like brothers again, you know, I've, and then obviously moved to Toronto for somehow I, I fell in love. I, I find love for the first time, which is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And then on top of that too, now this is, you're going to relate to us right here. I met someone who's amplifying my, 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 my roots. He's like, you should be proud to be Vietnamese. And that even hit me even harder. Cause yeah. again, I told you I was nurtured Italian. Yeah, I was told yeah. I was Calabrese. Like yeah. I, 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 you know, and I worked in Italian restaurant people, but not once I said, I'm a proud Vietnamese person Yeah, because Ottawa did not accept that. Wow. Yeah. 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 Ottawa did not celebrate that. If you say, let's go for pho, they're like, what's that? I was like, what do you mean? What's that? It's like the national. Okay, fine. But I went here. Yeah. Drank, partied, got to know the scene because I was doing my networking. Mm. I remember a blonde, blue eyed girl coming. He's like, Do you want to go to Rosan? I'm like, What's Rosan? It's like, It's dim sum. What, Becky, what do you know about dim sum? <laughs> <laughs> and, but like, yeah, I know there's a community kind of break. break. Uh, but like, she, she knew dim sum. I'm like, Excuse me? Okay, maybe it was just like a movie thing. We'll go to Rosan. It was a late night food. And she, Ordering harga and like I can't pronounce that word, and then like noodles and like mm. greens. I was like, "How do you know this?" And then that moment, I just remember looking around as like black people, Asians, white, Hispanics, like everyone, were was eating at a dim sum place, and I've never seen that in my entire life mm-hmm. because it's normal to be ethnic. It was great. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's Toronto for you. Though. That's Toronto. But I lived all my life not celebrating it. Yeah. So that's me as a human being that's for the first time. I'm taking it in right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To say I'm Vietnamese. And it's it's hard to even say it. Fuck. But I'm going to celebrate it. This is my upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what Toronto was for me. Yeah. And that's, just starting too. I was only here for a year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Because like you just have a presence that it's just like I thought like you've been here for years now, you know, just... Oh, th- that's what it seems like. Only been a year, dude. That's that's yeah, but like a year. Nothing. That's just I know. That's, insane, <laughs> that's like you man. slept in. It's a year. Yeah. yeah, I've been to 150 different venues. I know lots of the cocktail mixologists in the city. That's I know cool. the wow. I, I I just I just used the tech technique I did in Ottawa, which is yeah. just out party, out drink, out socialize everything. Yeah. So yeah. I, as, as long as I didn't do anything stupid, I just kept kept so, it real. So like, what does your day to day look like now, like in Toronto? Like, are you is it mainly production stuff? Is it yeah, Clients. so so on, on the more film aspect of things right mm-hmm. now, what happens is I would usually just wake up, I meditate, I would read a book because now I'm picking up that habit now, yeah, read good. 10 pages. I got like new books now. I'm so excited. It's like 10 pages is easy because it's like, it's, it's not daunting. I got to read this book. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, people say, like, do 75 hours, 75. I was like, yo, bro, this is a little too <laughs> extreme for me. Okay, I need to, I don't have that time. They're like, mm-hmm. no, you do. No, I don't have that time. So I would wake up, meditate, and I would usually, when I can, work out. But mm. when the client calls and I see a message, I'm like, oh, God. I would just like, all right, time to... Do you get that anxiety computer. of like, I'm going to get all these messages. I have to I have to 
take care of these people like as the head mode? ceo and business person yes yeah yeah because i gotta train new managers in the future that they could do that for me but yeah. i am the relationship guy so i have to i i am thinking a high capacity i'm running four different roles creative director producer editor and then like cam op like mm -hmm. i have to think of that level all the time that fast and sales and like i just gotta do it and that that moment see the problem is that that moment when that that when I start sitting on my computer, that's what's turned on. Mm. And I go, yeah. and mm. I have like all these tabs going on and sell. It's a good, sell, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I really personally just want to stick to one thing. And what is that one thing right now? I love editing passionately. Yeah. And oh, do, okay. Do I, do I want to be deep? No, like, like these tools are great. But do I geek out? I was like, oh my God, there's this like, <laughs> no, I'm like, no, I don't. You don't have to, right? cell phone. Yeah. Right. So is that like, so like, do you have like a core clients you work with? Like, how does that work? Like, what's like your... I've learned to become like the agency to agency. So a lot of B2B that yeah, does yeah. B2C mm -hmm. content. Exactly. I, I, see. I love that stuff. Yeah. But then I realized that's what's going to be tongue as a director. Mm. Okay. Oh, well, what does that mean? Because I'm learning about your work and I'm mm. learning your work and I'm learning about my friends and my employees work. I'm like, oh, everyone likes to be different. So I want to be a hub where like I will amplify their skill sets and their perspective on filmmaking. Let Brian Tong be that internet, BuzzFeed, Vice, whatever it is, tonality guy. That's who I am. That's interesting. Wow, so I'm not going to steer away from it. I'm not going to do freaking Batman, which is the most amazing yeah, cinematography yeah. ever, but there's no way you would see me do that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. just for fun, but you will never see me as the first choice of drug. Right. Yeah, I like that way of saying that. Yeah, first choice of drug. <laughs> yeah, I took the blue pill instead of the red. Yeah, so yeah. So what so, kind of agencies are you working with? Uh, there's Quell Agency, so they actually represent BIPOC and AAPI uh, representative oh, and cool. talents, nice. right? RC Media on top mm. of that as well too. I worked with, man, they changed the name. Uh, uh, I was just recently talking to a, uh, an agency called Church and Co. And then I just recently talked to again those those are like the atypical agencies. I think I worked with Cosette at one point. Oh, very oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah, big yeah. agency. Yeah, but they were all through like networks and Nar Nar City and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, right? So, so they're these agencies are hiring you to produce the content for their clients. Absolutely, yeah. and sometimes creating, conceptualizing everything too. But now they've been oh. taking it in house, which is great. Fine. Then I I, I personally now want to work with different people and uh, agencies that would work with me on that level too. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason why is because like when I work in a client level, obviously there's so much education aspect of it. But if the client already knows what agencies are, oh, mm -hmm. mm. let's get to really creating. Let's get mm. to really work. Yeah. You don't have to educate them on the most basic of things. Yeah. But sometimes mm. I do feel for them. There are times like right now I'm volunteering a lot, like a lot. How so? Uh, like right now, uh, before I was at, uh, I'm not going to say the organization for privacy that's reasons, fine. but yeah. So like I was helping out like after school programs. And oh, stuff that's cool. That. Oh, okay. nice. I realized I'm a great teacher based on my dance, uh, ability because yes, like, yeah. I just, yeah, so I'm applying for youth for youth. So I'm trying to teach kids to actually find their best talent and kind of apply nice. it. Wow. They're like, well, I'm from the block. It's like, well, guess what? <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and then like that's cool yeah and then i'm also trying to do uh colon drives as well too oh, and so i, I do back. a lot of charitable work so nice. i'm Love just that. trying to find a place in toronto that will apply that yeah um anyways that, we're deviating Would you ever from, start your own uh, organization or your own thing actually this brings back to another the, the third part of toronto this is yeah okay. this actually might help out so we revert back so no i will not start my own agency because i i don't I don't know the nuance and the history of it. Do I want to learn? Bro, I'm 36. I have my brain capacity is done. I'd rather hire someone who actually has the experience to do it at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like smart. money's coming in. At this point, I'm just going to spend it. Like I just don't like, yeah. So I'm not going to buy a boat. I'm just going to buy someone <laughs> with a talent that can make another 50K for charity. I'd yeah. rather do that. That's cool. You Interesting. Know? So what happens on, the, on, on, on my third aspect of it is like my purpose in Toronto. This is what I have found. Is that like, look, I can make everything on my own, like hustle my own name. and I don't care about clout. I don't care about my name. You can call me the period and I'll be okay. I don't care. As long as the period has an impact and a purpose and that's drive towards it, I don't care what it would be. So what does that mean in, the, in summary? It means that I'm willing to work with anyone with an established project, name and brand to amplify their purpose that aligns with mine. That's it. I don't have, I don't need to, my name is attached that's to it. Pretty clear mission statement. Very Nice. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's mm. like an aspect of it. So yeah, so uh, volunteering. And I don't even know where the question started from to get to that but point. I mean, I, I love that. I just want to riff on that a little bit because yeah. I really like that because I think we're in the same 
age zone. So, yes, you know, yes. so I think we reached that point where initiative and mission above everything else, above everything, else. above everything. And I just literally posted a story about that with Dame talking about, you know, oh. like money doesn't matter when you're chasing your dreams. You know, like, I had the money. Yeah. When I was doing the dance career, the cocaine, the drugs, the yeah. everything, oh, bro, like I had the money. I was, I was, I never seen 10K rocking into my account in less than an hour so fast in my life. Yeah. You know, dancing, like who would have thought? It's because I was doing casting agencies and I was doing videos on top of that. It was so fast. I was getting, getting bottle service every other week. It was nuts. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> what it was, a life, dude. Holy. But what, is, what did that mean? Because I want to talk about that because I also had a period in life where yeah. I, I found money. Yes. Doing my craft. And I was like, holy shit, I got it made. But I was fucking depressed. Yeah. And I couldn't find out why. Yeah. And then oh, when I'm I curious. discovered it, well, it actually is a long story, but, yes. you know, uh, this is about you. But just to give it, you know, a really big summary, sure. you know, when the pandemic ended, when the pandemic hit, my whole career crashed. But oh, yes, everything else in my life were crashed, too. People were passing away, oh. relationships, everything, everything and anything you can think of. Pretty much dark rock bottom. Damn. Like absolute dark rock bottom. But before that happened, two, three years before that, my career was blooming. I was in things that I never thought I'd be part of. Yes. Right? And I was like, holy crap, like this is amazing. And that's how he heard about me and everything. And I was just like, all right, I'm oh. doing it. And then when the pandemic crashed, my whole career, everything went down. Everyone felt And that. from there, it forced me to think. Mm. It forced me because I had no choice. You know, he's like, stay at home, everyone. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm staying at home now, right? Because I was traveling the world before that. And so when I sit at home, I'm thinking, I'm sitting there like, the money was obviously nice, yeah. right? I spent it on gear, <laughs> you know, because I'm an introvert. So, yes. you know, I spent on what I enjoy, but I wasn't happy. And why? And it made me really think about what do I want to do? Mm, let's see. It. it made me really think about that. And it made me realize that the power of money is a, it's a tool, Right, it's either you use it as a tool, carelessly for the for the things that make you temporarily happy, mm -hmm. or you use it as, as a tool to build the building blocks to a future and a life you want to create. Yes. So money is very important. I'm never saying money is not important. Yeah. Money is a very valuable resource in your life. You just got to know where to put it. Yeah, absolutely. I learned that way too late. Now That's I'm trying it. to save for a house. Me too. Man, I I'm wish way too late. <laughs> I, I wish I knew yeah. that when I had like exactly. 10 racks in my account. I would have just I bought saw, something. Oh my The Italians taught me. They're like, boy, buy real estate. It's like, nah, man, I'm buying a plane. Oh, man. <laughs> like I sat there. I was like, get a check for like 30K for the first oh, time. And you're sitting there like, God. what do I do with this? We have to learn late, but I, like I'm used to thirty dollars. I know. Like I have thirty. And what are you gonna do like, with a broke kid with a lot of money? You're gonna yeah. blow it. Exactly. <laughs> You're gonna blow exactly. it. It's like I'm the king of the court now, bro. Yeah. Like you try and treat me like shit. That, uh, sorry, I'm not. No, no, no. But, that, but that's, that, that, I feel that though. Like <laughs> you know, I, think I didn't like, express like, it, but I feel it's that. It's like a dog. Like you ever? You, do you guys have pets or dogs? Or, like, yes, I do. It's yes, like do. You, dogs that eat this like crappy food all the time. When you give them a nice fucking full plate of food, they're gonna gobble it up in two seconds. Absolutely, it's like yeah, the money. Yeah. It's like if, if you if you came up with nothing, you're probably gonna spend the the money you get because you're not used to it. Financial literacy is a thing, yeah. but it's yeah. also a drug. It just gives you that it's accolades addiction. and the, and and the affirmations, five love languages, uh, like yeah. like the things that you never received in your life. Yeah, yeah. All the women I had in the world, in a sense, in that perspective, was yeah. like there. Yeah. Right. You know, and and but what happened was that like everything was temporary. And then mm -hmm. like, you just yeah. realize, you just realize that when I had the money, uh, girls were dating me for opportunities and, yeah, I, was, and I could right. smell it, but way too late. But by the time uh, they got the opportunity, they leave. Right. I'm like, great. That's terrible. You, right? didn't, you didn't see it because you're maybe too close to it. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it, the money kind of like what, what, what is it? Yeah. It, it blinds you. I mean, Dane put it in, in that interview and I'm going to keep referring to it because I just saw it. Like yeah, the whole yeah, thing. And, yeah. and Dane put it the best. He's like money. Money is the devil in a lot of ways where it blinds you from, it keeps you blind from what really makes you happy. Uh, absolutely. It's the number one blindfold you can wear. All the materials that you buy, you think it might amplify your happiness. Oh, I got a bigger TV. That makes me happy. No, it yeah. doesn't, bro. It's right? like two seconds. And then you're yeah. like, ah, I'm still. Yeah. I mean, I mean we, can, we can relate to that a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes like we, we go through hard shit and then it's like, you know what? If I just buy this camera, I'm going to be happy. Yeah, and you are happy. You're excited. You're fucking tracking the tracking number. You're like, oh my god, I'm a door. You get it, and you you playing with minutes. it. And you're like, holy shit. Then you put it away, and you're like, but my life still sucks. So you know, and you know, like it doesn't. I, correlate. And then we mask it in the idea. Oh, it's and an investment. It. It's an investment. And it is yeah. like it's not the worst thing to buy. Like I didn't buy a, a car I can afford. Yeah, but it's like 
there's a deeper thing that isn't being resolved. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it comes in different ways for different people. For me, it's a pinnacle moment when I was with all the celebrities from like Avicii and everyone in the backstage. Mm-hmm. I was just with everyone. And I remember That's seeing cool. that. It was my first dance contract. I was so happy. And see two of my best friends behind the other fence. And I'm like, oh my God, you should, I'm so happy that you get to watch me dance. I'm like, hey, can, can two of my, no. So secure, no. And I looked at them and they're like so proud of me. Yeah. And I'm right here. And I looked at the bottles. I looked at the women. I looked at the drugs. I looked at all the celebrities. And then I looked at them. I'm like, I'm not. That's it's almost like you'd rather be. I'd rather be. I'd rather not have the money and be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who screw the girls? Mm-hmm. And that time, uh, they call me. They're like, hey, man, you've been doing this good job. And this hits me. I have many episodes like this. Mm-hmm. It's like, we got you a hotel. Oh, my God. I'm going to get fucking late. Let's go. Like, yeah. the first thing comes into mind. Went into the hotel. And it was a big king size bed. It was meant for a bigger DJ that we just couldn't make it. So I had this luxurious place. Hmm. And I sat in that bed by myself thinking I was going to text or whatever. But I actually sat in the bed and I looked in a room and I had no one to talk to. Yeah. And I was like, that's like fuck, us. I feel that. That's crazy. No, I feel that, man. Because I, when I traveled the world, it was the same thing. No matter what hotel room I went to, it didn't matter. I sat there and I was like, I don't know who to talk to. And that's it. I got no one to talk to. And, and, and even like people who used to message me all the time and be like, oh, man, like, how do I do what you do? Like, I want to be, I'm a starving student. And I used to sit back and I would be honestly, I sit back and I think I would trade my life with you right now. Yes. I'd rather be you. I'd rather, I want that hunger back. Yes. To regain what I want, like I don't care that you're starving. Take my money, take everything. I want to be you, mm-hmm. because it was the it was that chase that I wanted back. You, it's more it's more like almost finding the purpose again. You, again you're yeah. you, you're trying to find a purpose that will fulfill that makes an impact during yeah, that time. But exactly. now that you felt like you had it, what is the purpose anymore? Dr- dr- you know, like drugs and women, like yeah. like or like those like. I can't even say that word. Sorry. It's just like just the, all that lustfulness. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It just didn't really serve a purpose. It didn't. It didn't make another kid happier. It didn't save another life. It yes. just satisfied you for five minutes, and that's yes. it. Right. Hundred percent. You know, and, and that's that, kind of like where social media is at, though. I feel like there's like this push for this almost like weird delusional like ideal life. You know, it sucks because mass product reaches mat the masses. Right. And right. I think honestly, I think all of it's. This is kind of more philosophical, but it's all like it's all coming to an end. I feel like this whole like I don't think so. The reason why consumerism is always forever. Yeah, but but do you feel like you see like these influencers and like these like celebrity boxing matches? I'm like, this is a whole circus. Like, what is this? Like, what is? Yeah, but it's like what is like, and then TikTok is like brainwashing people. It's like there's no value in this content. Like, there's real shit going on in the world. We're avoiding through this blindless blind, blind entertainment. It's like. What is going on? Like it, it's is- unfortunate because I think it's like I don't know what you call it. Media, whatever you want to call it, yeah, you know, media. understands yeah. that most people nowadays are living one minute at a time. Well, I want fifteen right. seconds, dude. I want to challenge that seconds. actually. This is actually more more deeper into like a social dynamics and the human sure. and a, like aspect of it. Yeah. I thought about I like this because I, like I was it. alone. <laughs> All right, so so why do certain products do super well? Let's just say, how many of us when back in the day when we saw the shopping channel, we saw that potato peeler, we're like, yo, man, we need that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm saying to myself, well, the sham, sham well. <laughs> sham well. And then all yeah. of a sudden, everyone has a sham well. The right, consumer right. Is, is, is represents the masses. The masses, the majority of the time, in order for one company or business and entity to get rich, is to sell something that would solve a problem. Yep. And what what is the problem? The problem is that they don't want to put the effort. They don't want to waste the extra time. If it's faster, easier, I will do it. Unfortunately, that's human nature. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. You feed them the dream, the dr- the gang mindset. Right. Let me tell you, I'll get you the cars. I'll get you the girls. I'll get you. I'll get you the fast life easier yeah. if you just pass one card to another card. That's it. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna buy the sham. Well, I don't have to buy another towel. So that said, social media is the exact same drug. Yeah. Right. They are just presenting to a mass fantasy that mm. people love and want to fantasize and consume. I'm sorry. Like that's going to last forever because they're seeking it. Porn industry is super high because everyone wants physical intimacy. They think that would be it. But until they got it, they're like, oh man, that's, that's empty. They're giving them everything they need at the palm of their hands. Yeah. The silver platter. It convenient. Yeah, pumping right. Like but yet drug. it's unattainable because you can't obtain it. It's, it's virtual. Yes, it's fa- right? so, facade and everything. Yeah. So, so in a way, isn't it that in essence a lie? It's always been a lie since the beginning. Fair enough. 
But the, the people, the people who are using the system to get ahead, they know it's they know it's like they know it is. Up. It's like so it's, you have to use that manipulation like to your favor. That's I called guess. consumerism. Yeah. I'm sorry, capitalism. I, like, I, I, it's I, the cold I, world. I understand it's it. It's the I'm cold world. Like, it's it is the guess the reality of what's happening. But it's like you think Basil's care what happened in the pandemic. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's, I'm just like, you think, you think Zoom actually cared? Like they profited so much of the pandemic. Like, but if you just realize like the, the real stuff that's going on in the world and then you sit, then you see what most of the people in the world are consuming and like what they're focusing on, which is mindless entertainment. Like, that's what TikTok is. It's, for me, it's mindless. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 1% value. Maybe if you yeah. actually research and go deep, but like, yeah. People dancing and like making loads of money and like, like selling their bodies on, on online. It's like, I, I'm, hey, I'm, make your money, but the fuck. thing is, like, I think that's I I see this as you're absolutely right, but I mm. see this as this is why what we do is important mm. because my intentions, at least for us as faction, and hope I, from my understanding as you ch- you know do charitable work and your, and your ability to give back to the community, why it's even more important because. We're here to actually impact lives in a positive manner. We just had a meeting yesterday. I'm not going to discuss details, but mm-hmm. I did, you know, mention what was the number one thing. And and I know it's hard for people to understand what's the number one goal for you in this. What do you look up to? I said, I, why do I have to look up to anybody? I want to look up to me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And because I'm going to change the world, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna change a life. That's all I want to do. But then the question became, well, what do you see yourself with? What you talking materialism, like cars, houses, whatever? I don't know. It's going to be a byproduct of however my life decides to, decides to go, a byproduct of my effort. Mm. I don't care about any of that. It's when I get up there, can I be one person who gets the power, to obtain enough power, not money, but power to affect the world in a positive way through the medium in which I'm doing it? Can I? And that's the question. And everything else is the byproduct of it. Mm. So in order for to combat that, instead of my my whole thing is never to lecture people be like you know this is all fake like why are you into this why are you doing this do the change that you want to make yeah and let the rest just fall into the place that's supposed to be like, that's the way i see like it that you're feeling this way right now because you, that's your value and your importance right and guess what in, in a good way social media will actually find that trend for you and find that tribe which is fantastic but unfortunately statistically say sex sells so guess what there will be tons of that i'm like I, i'm i'm not opposed to it like i was i, I just don't i don't know it's like i'm at a I'm at a crossroads with it. I would yeah, say like, yeah, I haven't yeah. I haven't mm-hmm. mentally wrapped my head around like yeah. what's actually important and having like certain experiences. I'm like this is all like this is all weird. Like all this is weird. Like we're focusing on so many different like the wrong things in life. That's what I, believe I feel I, yeah. I you know what I concur drastically. I mean like Iran is going through so much. Palestine and Israel. There's like so much deeper stuff and there's earthquakes happening. These things should be really amplified. But that's kind of like the due diligence. So some people are in a fortunate place to kind of have a bigger voice. Yeah. But they also have a due diligence. But some right. people don't. You know. Yeah. I mean like I mean again like I'm not. It's no one's fault. Like I'm not like if you want to be whoever you want to be like fine like kudos like if people play the game on social media they play the game and they do really well like i'm yeah either you play the game or you don't yeah but it's a game right yeah but it comes back and amplifying your your point it's all sadly it's all capitalism and that's just kind of had north america aspect i just came back from europe and okay. I, that was my first time seeing uh like life interesting people and what, and what do you so mean? everyone tells me that because they like, chill. Yeah, it's, it's right. Wild. They're outside. <laughs> they're outside. outside. They're outside. They, they I know. It's crazy. At three, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go get a coffee and like chill at the cafe and like, 100%. go to the beach later." And that's it. And yeah. it's like, why? It's like, it's, 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 we got things to do. Yeah, it's we, crazy. You got places. Yeah, you're. <laughs> what, what part of Europe did you? Did you? I went to seven to? countries in a like month. Oh, I know. Nice. Missed it 200 miles per second here. <laughs> was, that, was, was that enough for you to experience all the countries? Like, did you feel fine? Like. I did it. I have a different way of like experiencing things. So I get a shock value at first. This is my introvert okay. side. Mm-hmm. I get a shock value and I get super quiet and then I observe everything on the surface level. And then what happens is that my brain starts processing so many questions. I'm like, wait, just let me consume it. And then when I get home, I will then process. Right. Right. It's almost like taking pain in a sense, pain yeah. that right. like, well, this is too much. I'm not used to it, but like, hold up, let's take it in what makes sense to me and then go from there. And then what happened is that after all the seven to eight countries, I came back and was like, I get it. They, everyone lives so well over there. But the only thing that's only a factor that I see different is money. Yeah. Because capital consumerism is not highly like intense over in, in Europe. In my perspective at that time with that surface level, 
scene. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't. I don't see it the same way. It's not like someone had two Blackberries back in the day in New York, and it's like trying to stock change and everything again. The next thirty million. Yeah. No, that mindset was like, I was able to pay my bill, and then we're gonna go see my family. Literally, yeah. That's sick. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like you're going out there and just some of them say what's up. Like yeah. you just hang out with them. But it, I, it's crazy. I, but I get their dream. They're now, yeah. now. I bet you anything. You probably put social media. This is, you can feel free to challenge me. Whoever is yeah. watching this, this is why I'm super curious. I bet North Americans th- thinks of uh, luxury and freedom and fantasy and sex and 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 all that stuff. Whereas on the on the European side, I could see they're just talking about like. Find the freedom of like opportunities and money. It's just like a completely different timeline and feeds that they're gonna receive here. We dream of living by the water and old buildings yeah. and lofts. They're dreaming about brand new builds and like minimalism and because like, they don't see it. So mm. this is this like the grass is greener on the other side perspective situation sure. here. Right. So to me, uh, obviously raised in North America, I went to Europe. Now I fantasize about Europe because. Who does not want to go live in like an old like build with so much arts and history and you character, open up sure. yeah. and then you see yeah. you know people speaking a different language, eating in a different way, and then seeing buildings of, of, of such you know history versus the you know CN Tower, which is built. but to them they they think this is just, like yeah, it really is so yeah. So I don't know how we got into this conversation. Yeah, but like, yeah we need to really de- derail yeah. back into yeah, where I think. It's, it's I, all I just, good. I just have a lot of stories, but that, that's, yeah. that's it. But yeah. like, again. Uh, so what are you focusing on now? Like what are your goals for the company and obviously for yourself and like your team and your brother? So for me, I personally want to find myself as a creator again. I definitely got lost. You in said the you sauce. want to be an editor. Lost in the sauce. I right? did. And you did yeah. mention that you wanted to niche into one thing. Yeah. Right? So how are you going to bring everything that you do and just the way that you've been just observing everything, absorbing everything? How are you how are you planning to bring that into go one back thing? into the roots? What I how I started. Interesting. Cuz then there will be back like a, basics. it's almost like a clean palette again. Yeah, yeah. And then you now I have to do it I do it with experience. Now there's going to be a clear yellow brick road. And I'm like I'm and I'm seeing it every second. Nice. Cuz the video I just posted right now was a video of me going to New York. So I actually feeling a little bit lost. I missed someone and I was just like, "No, I got to do this myself." I didn't tell anyone. They didn't even tell yeah. my best friend. It was only two weeks ago, around two weeks ago. Just booked to New York by myself. That's it. No That's questions. Crazy. What are you gonna do? I wanted to do that two weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. I want to be lost. And then yeah, I remember yeah. you said you said that in the video. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I want to be found. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, I'm lost. What do I want to do? I just want to eat pizza. That's like that's <laughs> it. And then, yeah. and then I, if I'm going to go to eat pizza, I'm like. Uh, the walk is kind of boring and I don't want to listen to music because I listen to music for all my life. So what am I going to do different? Cell phone. Oh, this is... Oh, I remember. Now I made a whole vlog. Yeah. Now I met new people. I met new friends. And I was like, okay, the, the what's good beat on Persona's coming out. Yeah. I mean, your friends. It's like, where are you going after? It's like, well, I'm going to try to find a bar. You should go over this bar. Oh, let's go. Go in. It's like, all right, I'm going to have a tequila, spirit forward, old fashioned, make a reposado. And then they're like, whoa, how do you know? Girl, let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, what's your handle? Let me tell you. What's good? <laughs> and did it all over again, like step one. Yeah. And I and I just connected brand new people and I just start to see my path now. I mm. am that beacon of life for some people. I am an entertainer. I am a personality. 100%. I am a creator. I am a filmmaker. I'm a great director. And I, I can conceptualize. I'm a great storyboard. To, like, so, uh, but why editing then? Because editors are stuck in a black room in a computer by themselves. Correct. So what happens is that all that's done, it comes down to editing. And what happens is that I could actually start curating a story so well. And I've learned to take bad content to mm. make it beautiful content. That's where my training came from. So I decided to film recklessly, but also at the same time with experience now. That's why some of my footage is so nice. Right. So I, I sit in the editing room, but I feel more passionate because I'm able to curate a story better. I really study that. Tracing back all the way from L.A., I actually befriended someone who actually edited uh, Death of the Autotune by Jay-Z and did BET for the baby and all that stuff. And uh, so he told me to read this book, which is called The Blink of an Eye, mm-hmm. which is a one fantastic editing book. I wanted to be a good editor at that time. So when I learned it, I became consume that, that that monster and i love the way how i could take any videos and make a story out of it so that's why i want more editing more interesting you could give me a horrible footage you could give me one photo 
That was the challenge I had. Right. You could give me one photo and I can make a 15 to 30 second clip out of it. Uh, hmm. Cause I was able to conceptualize a story. So all that said in the physical aspect of it, I could put it into the post edit aspect of it. Interesting. And because I'm an introverted train extrovert, who doesn't want to be at home in my pajamas, taking yeah. a piss in my own right. washroom when I need to? <laughs> I, that's, that's living right there. That's it's actually, almost like you're the like you're a modern day writer, but you're not writing, you're editing. That's yes. your way of writing. Oh, 100%. You've had such a story and you've been so, through so many story things and now you want to write your book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, you can give me any footage. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You kind of need both. You need that like I'm out there in the world experiencing, consuming all this data almost like life mm. experience. But you also need the I'm going back to curate this now in this piece in my alone in my room. Yes. Man. And that feeds both sides of yourself, I guess. The introvert train extrovert. The like editor train DP. So let, let's let's bring this all to one thing here. Yes. After all that experience, what is what can you give young creators like yourself who want to be like yourself, who start multiple businesses or perhaps start from the bottom and make their way up? Yes. What's one piece of advice you can give them? Okay, so people say do whatever you're happy. Now, there's a lot of nuances and details in that one. So let's start from the blank slate right now, okay? Let's start with just waking up and what do you want to do right after? Finding what you love is the most important thing. How do you determine that? Basically, if it's food, cook it and cook it well in the way you want it. You want it to eat dessert first before dinner? Do it. You find love. Feed your love palate and your cup as much as as possible feed your love cup as much as possible in any aspect of the way that will lead you to something even further without realizing it i recommend this to everyone i recommend to be curious and i recommend to be empathetic and 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 feed that aspects of their love into that i know it sounds very like you know shambhala no, 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 hippie that. stuff I love like it, that man i love it but like once you figure that out you will see you will see your your path starts to form naturally because mm. everything around the universe will actually feed you there. Just as I said, I wanted to have pizza and it led me to magical stuff. It really did. Mm. That New York trip was actually pretty epic. Mm. Yeah. So the first things first is trying to almost find yourself by through love. Mm. All right. So at the time I lo loved music, love dance, love whatever thing I stuck with that and it became the most fruitful six figure business I've ever done in my life. Mm. So after that, when you do that, that's fine. So that's my first thing. Second is always to stay curious. I know people said that before too, but like no one likes someone who just orders the same burger all the time. I mean, like, can you imagine right. going on a date with a girl who has the same burger all the time? And then you go to another fancy restaurant and they order a burger and order the burger. I'm using a date for as an example because it will amplify to other aspects of their lives because like they just like something simple and easy. And if that's not what you like and that's not what you want, this is not going to go anywhere. So basically be always be curious and explore. And then I was like, why do they use masala? Why do they use, you know, paprika? Why do they season in a cookout? You know? Mm. And so the more you be curious and explore, then it will, it will get you very far in the game. So start off with love Second, to be curious, right? And then last, it would be more so like empathetic. Hmm. Yeah, I my, my, my Studio 79E, we, we follow the rule of like being culturally empathetic because you want to embrace life in every way possible in the most deepened level. When I say cultural empathy, I'm talking about skateboard culture. I'm talking about breakdance culture. I'm, I'm talking about cooking culture. I'm talking about drawing culture, calibri culture. There's so much things in life. Just take it in. Don't be limited by it. So if you can only be understanding of that, guess what? It will be you'll be understanding to your relationships. You're gonna be understanding to your friends. You're gonna be understanding to the new people. Like you said, you're not introvert, extrovert. It's just a trait. Yeah, but like I understand where you're coming from because of that. So that little empathy will bring me further in the game. Yeah. So those are the three basics aspects of it. So I say love, and I say stay curious, and last is be empathetic, and that's like my top three. And I will just preach that nonstop. It's amazing, man. Damn. Dude, what a great conversation. Yeah, it was a great conversation. I went everywhere, but I love Woo! it. <laughs> it went way too much. And I'm sure it could have gone even further and entangled up into this big web. But honestly, thank you so much for coming, man. We really Anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Until next time. Awesome. Part Please. two. Yes. Hey, me. <laughs> <laughs>